Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go over everything we know so far about the upcoming 2023 Q's Winter Wonderland event. As always, chapters are listed down below. The first thing I want to take a look at is when this event goes live. So it's going live on both PC and console next Tuesday, December 5th, 2023, and it's going to be running up through January 4th of 2024. And for those of you over on console, your fifth and final event for the year-long event campaign should be starting up shortly, if not immediately, after the end of this winter event. So if you're needing any event campaign progress over on console, make sure to keep an eye on things in January. And the grand prize for the 2023 winter event is the Tier 6 Tamarian Deep Space Cruiser from Season 5, Episode 2 of The Next Generation, Darmok. This is a ship that you can earn for free simply by participating in various activities for about 20 days of the month-long event, and the eligible events this year are going to be the fastest game on ice, Klingon ice fishing, Tides of Ice, the Fast and the Flurious, Cones of Conduct, and the Crampiri. Now, I do want to remind you that you do not need to play each of these listed events every single day. Simply participating in just one of these every 20 plus hours will get you the daily progress. Personally, I just do the fastest game on ice. I am in and out of the winter map with my daily done, typically in two to three minutes. And if you find yourself in a position where you're not going to be able to play enough to get the ship for free, there is going to be a buyout. Unfortunately, these winter event ships do have a lobby crystal buyout. It starts at a thousand lobby crystals and will increment down by 50 for each day of progress you are able to get. Now, a thousand lobby crystals is very, very expensive. On average, the Infinity Lockbox will net you somewhere around 5.3 to 5.4 lobby per lockbox. And using that 5.4 value, that means that you would need about 185 master keys to get a thousand lobby. That's basically $185. Now, keep in mind that this is an event ship, and being that it is a ship that can be obtained for free by playing the event, it does mean that it is designed to be weaker than the current sea store offerings as to not devalue paid ships. So, to really summarize that, I don't think that the Thousand Lobby buyout is worth it. I don't think that this ship is worth more than what the entire 10th anniversary bundle is going to cost you. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you need to buy out like the remaining four or five days in order to get the ship, that's a different situation and you can use your own judgment to see if that's worth it for you. You know, if you're in a position where you have 15 days done and you need to buy out the remaining five days, then because it increments down, you would only need to pay 250 lobby. And that's just a little bit more than what a lobby console would cost. So that that's entirely up to you. I think at that point, I would probably use the lobby buyout. But if you're sitting there with no progress, I, I just don't think I could recommend in any situation spending a thousand lobby on this ship. And another route that you'll be able to get it long term is through the mud store. It will probably be added to the mud store a year or two from now. And during the 75% mud sales, it would have a cost of about 42 bucks. So if you miss this winter event, there are going to be ways to get this ship again in the future. It might just take a couple of years for it to show up again. And as for the stats here for the Temerian, as of me recording this video here on November 29th, Cryptic has not yet released a stats blog for the ship, but as soon as they do, which will most likely be on Friday, I'll make sure to get a stats breakdown video out so that you know how this ship stacks up against existing offerings and what type of builds are going to be best suited for this ship. And next up, I want to take a look at the items that they're adding into the winter store. These are items that you're going to be able to acquire with the various winter currencies that you can earn by doing various activities on the Q's Winter Wonderland map, or by buying them directly off the exchange from other players. So the first one here is Frozen Batleth of Dishonor. This is inspired by the icy prison of Dishonor in Grethor. This rhyme covered Batleth slows its target so that they cannot so easily run away from your wrath. And there's a visual of it. But that looks interesting, but I never expect any of these melee weapons to perform that well personally. But I imagine some of you will have fun with this. 
Next up, there's a new universal kit module, Exothermic Redirection. This absorbs heat from your target, causing it to freeze, and redirects that heat to one of the target's allies, causing it to burn. And there's a science training module for the exact same thing if you want to put that on your bridge officer. There's a new Starfleet beanie flipped, a warm hat with the Starfleet Delta. Why is the Delta on backward? No reason, certainly not to distract from the fact that aliens have accidentally scrambled your DNA. Then there's three new ugly sweaters here. There's the Q robe, a warm knit patterned version of the famous magisterial robes worn by your lovely host Q, complete with knitted gold medallion. You see that at the right here on this picture. Then there's the Temerian ugly sweater, Picard and Dathan at El Adrill, a jolly expression of the holiday festivities via the laughter of the famous Temerian captain, an expression that can't be misunderstood. So that's the middle one there. And then the left one is the Temerian doll ugly sweater. It's not a doll. It's the likeness of Lieutenant Kayshawn transformed into a doll by alien technology. So this is from episode or season two, episode two of Lower Decks, in which their Temerian crewman was transformed into a puppet. So that is what that is referencing. And this is how we knew that the Temerian was going to be the winter event ship this year. When they showed the winter sweaters off on 10 forward last week, two of them being Tamarian, really pointed towards the idea that the, the ship, the grand prize, was going to be a Tamarian ship. And there's also the Mokai tunic. Wait, how did this get in with the ugly sweaters? It's an actual house Mokai leather tunic as worn by Jula, shoulder pads included. So no visuals of that, nor some of the other things they mentioned here, like the beanie or the, the kit module there. And that's it. So that is everything that they're adding in this year with the winter event. It looks like there's no new activities on the map and there's no new space items, just the items that I just went over. So a couple of visuals, the frozen bat lift and a universal kit module and training module for your science bridge officers that does the same thing as the kit module. Not the most packed winter event, but I think that's, you know, just the, the trend of the game is we're still getting development, but it really does feel like things have certainly slowed down in the past couple of years. So that's it for for the winter event breakdown. Let me know what you think of it down below. Is there anything here that stands out to you? Are you excited for the ship or do you hate it uh, for the, the Temerian Deep Space Cruiser here? If you recall from that episode, it was a rather large ship. It was quite big compared to the galaxy. Unfortunately, there's not a picture over here, but it it looked like a, a pretty big ship. So I'm interested to see what they did with it stats wise. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys around. And like I said earlier, stay tuned because there will be a stats breakdown for that Temerian Deep Space Cruiser as soon as Cryptic drops the stats blog. See you guys around.